How y'all doing? This is part three of CentOS slash Aspris slash FreePVX installation. We have successfully installed it. Not very difficult. Um, gave it a static IP address, um, which is 192.168.2.2. .2 um, so we just, if you're in a virtual machine, you minimize it. It's still running. You can come up to your web browser, type in the IP address, two, and then make sure you put admin on the side, otherwise if you don't, it'll go into just the default users interface um, where, you know, your users, if you're installing this for a business or, or maybe in your house, your family members can go in to check their voicemail online. Um, so you'll type in slash admin, press enter, and you are at the um, configuration console. I believe the default is admin, admin, yes, so the default is admin slash admin. Um, so never for this site. Go ahead and plus, anytime you see the uh, red up there that says apply configuration, you're going to go ahead and press it. So you can see your processor, your memory, your disks, um, your network, all that type of stuff is right there. Um, your active calls, internal calls, external calls, and total active uh, channels will show up here. And once you uh, um, set up extensions and you set up um, your trunks and things like that, they'll show up down here um, and you can use them or it'll, it'll tell you so, and you can check it for the status of your trunks. So just to get um, familiar with this real quick, you see right here where it says symlink for modules failed. Um, we're we're going to go over that in a minute. Um, and then you see right here de default AR admin password used and default asterisk man manager password um, used. Basically to, to get rid of that all you're going to do is you're going to come over to settings other admin um, administrators um, you're going to type in admin admin No, okay. You're going to click on admin over here. I apologize. You're going to click on admin. It'll come up right there and you'll type in your admin password. And it's a good idea to change the administrator name to get rid of those those warnings that you get. So once you do that, you go ahead and click log out, log back in. with your newly set credentials. If you mess this up, basically, I think you pretty much have to install it again and try over. Um, get rid of that, get rid of that, and get rid of that. So run under admin, you have module admin. This is one of your most important functions. So basically, you're going to, what this does is it updates all of your different components of Asterisk and FreePBX. Free so you have your basic modules, your extended modules. You're going to want to select extended. Those are supported by FreePBX and it gives you the most um, the most support and the most uh, features and, and provisioning and everything else that you could want. So you, you click extended and you click check online. They're retrieving updates. Online modules are not available. Not sure why we're getting that error. So I can make sure.
we're going to go into Okay, sorry for that delay. I figured it out. I just sent it in my default gateway wrong. Simple mistake. I wasn't paying attention. Um, okay. So, you come back in. Let's see. We'll log out. So you log in. You go over to admin. Module Admin, you're going to select Basic and Extended. Check Online. Work this time. Now you're going to click Download All and Upgrade All. What this is going to do is it's going to save you a lot of time of clicking through all these little menus like I used to do before I looked at that, I guess. I, I didn't pay attention. It's going to select any, you want to select anything that can be downloaded and anything that can be updated. It's going to be a lot of stuff at first and you're just going to keep repeating this until it shut, returns nothing. So you can hit process, it's going to give you an idea of everything you're downloading, which is a lot, but these are a lot of the things that you need. You can set up queues, you can set up, you know, uh, I mean, you'll get extensions uh, automatically, you'll get voicemail, voicemail blasting, um, weak password detection, um, localization updates, ringback groups, uh, bulk phone restarts, you can restart your, your provision phones, um, PHP, phone books, everything that you want in a, in a IPPBX, you're gonna you're gonna get what these these downloads and these upgrades. So you're gonna click confirm. It's gonna come up with a little status window like this, and it's gonna start processing it. it may, it's gonna take a while for these first couple of times. If you if you have low bandwidth on your your ISP, um, you might want to look into this. Uh, you know, it's probably well over a gig that it's a gig or two that it's gonna be downloading, but you're just gonna you're gonna see and. Uh, and download everything. Updates are very important. Just gotta keep a look at the timer. Okay, so it says downloading, downloading, done. Everything was installed successfully. When that comes up, you're going to hit return and apply configuration. Every time you do something like that, create extend an extension, anything you do, you're going to apply configuration. That's going to actually write all of the, all the changes that you just did and all the configuration files with an asterisk. It's very important. So these two still um, selected, you're going to check online. Okay. See right here, not installed, but it's available. So these are things, after you just installed all these updates that are now available again. So download all, upgrade all. Scroll down through here, anything that's open like this, it's going to download and install. So you can hit process. These are the two, the three things, or the two things that you're going to be uh, upgrading or installing. Confirm. Be a little quicker this time. Return. Apply configuration. Check one more time until you get nothing back. Just go ahead and press download, upgrade, process. Again. Okay, so you see right here where it says user panel cannot be installed. Module free PBX ARI framework is required. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back into module admin, um, free PBX AR framework. You're going to click on that and you're going to enable it. Process. Confirm, return, as long as it says successful. Apply configuration. I'm going to check online. Okay, so it says disabled pending upgrade to 2.10.05. Let's see. Click on upgrade and enable. Process. Confirm. Successful, return, apply config, check online. Download all, upgrade all, process. Confirm. Successful, return, apply configuration, check online. 
download all, upgrade all, process. There's nothing left to upgrade, nothing left to download. Um, you can go back to module admin and you can click on unsupported or commercial. Commercial are things that you can buy. It's add on to, th add on to this. I'm not really interested in that. That's really out of the scope of this, uh, this tutorial. Okay, so now next thing we need to do is you're going to go to connectivity, I believe, and you are going to click on trunks. So this is the trunk that you add, actually add um, so that you can um, make calls in and outside of your, your local PBX. So if you had, like, let's say, call centric like me, you'd add, add SIP trunk, and then you're going to go to your website, like callcentric.com, And when you log in and you click on support, you um, might not even have to click on support, you're going to click on Trybox, Free PAX, click on that, and it's going to tell you. Um, configuring asterisk VP PBX using the Free PBX interface. So you're going to do everything that this says within in this. You're going to copy and paste all of this over there. So right here, you're going to have to change. You'll have, once you become a customer, you'll have your own security reasons, I'm not going to show you mine, but you'll have your own number. You'll uh, leave all that the same. You'll put in your password to your free PBX account. Or not your free PBX, your call centric account. Change that again. Um, and it's important to select your uh, your version also. These are different formats for different versions. If you have any problems with this and you're using call centric, they're really good. Um, about supporting you, so I'm just going to kind of leave it at that. You can figure that one out um, based on that. So let's see, add trunk. Okay. So after you add in your trunk, you're going to go to inbound route, and you're going to have to set in an inbound route. This basically says when you receive a call on that trunk, when you set up your trunk, um, there will be, let's see, when you set up your trunk, like a SIP, I believe you select your inbound route. first Okay, I'm not sure exactly. I've done this before, but it's it's harder when you're not actually when you're not actually doing it. Um it's hard to I don't know my way around well enough, I guess. Um, so let's just say we wanted to set up an extension, okay? General SIP device, generic SIP device, user extension. So let's say we set up 1001. Display name is um, first. You don't need to set up a, a CID number alias or a SIP alias. It's not important. Um, you don't need to set up an outbound, outbound caller ID. You could, but you don't have to. Um, there's nice little explanations of what all this is. Basically, it sets up customer caller ID um, whenever you dial out. Ring time, you can set up the number of seconds. I'm going to leave it at default. Call forward ring time. Again. Okay, so that's the, the maximum number of outbound um, calls that you can make from this uh, this extension. Um, call waiting enabled, internal auto answer. Um, so this is like for intercoms if you set it up. Um, one second. Okay, I'll see you in the next chapter. I've got to end this record time.